non-stop staging with uh, drone and docker. So for the last uh, few months, I've been doing a lot of DevOps work for our startup uh, using especially Docker and CN and other virtualization techniques. Uh, so Docker is a standardized uh, container format for Linux containers. It's using something called LXC, and then you can define these uh, containers that you can start up and uh, create new images of and the snapshot and stuff like that. Uh, and there's been built quite a few platform as a service uh, uh, products on top of that. Uh, so the one I've been using recently is Docker. Docker is just like a collection of shell scripts that takes Docker and lets you like uh, push your module to it and it starts up a, a Docker instance and starts your app and uh, serves HTTP. It's using something called git receive, which means that you can do git push from the command line to deploy a new version of your application, very similar to how Heroku and .cloud works. Uh, yeah, so I've been combining this with Drone. Drone is another project that uh, does the same thing as Jenkins does, right? It does automated testing, and uh, every time you, you can hook it up to Bitbucket or GitHub, and every time you do a new commit, it will fire up a new Docker image, and then do a clean environment and run your test suit on that clean environment. And uh, you, the way you use it is you set it up on, uh, to listen to your GitHub repository, and then you add the file to your project called .droneyml, which you put into your GitHub repository, and that tells Drone how to run tests. Uh, so you tell it which image to use. Uh, you can create your own Perl-based base image in, in Docker, and it will just use to set that up. Uh, and you tell it which script to run, and it does like Perl, make file PL, it installs the apps and runs the test, and if that returns OK, then it will report it as a successful test, right? So here's my project. It's actually a Ruby project, but never mind that. You could also do it just as fine with Perl. Uh, and it will show for every commit if the test suit passes or fails, similar to what Travis does, but you can do it on, on your own for your own commercial projects without having to pay Travis money. Uh, and you can also run various notifications. You could set it up to run email. Our favorite way of doing this is using Slack, which is a chat client, so that we just set up which team to use, and I clipped out the API keys and stuff because you guys really don't need my API keys. Uh, and the end result is like this. So every time I push commit, it will start testing, and then it will report for each of these. Uh, you can see those two, 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 two pushes here are, have been run in the background. We stopped doing starting things because that was like a little bit too much spammy in the channel, but whenever it runs, it will report success or failure for every commit. Uh, and then I, the final thing that I did now is to hook that up with a de custom deploy script. You can set up like some simple deploy things like copy all of the files to a server or, or do the copy it to S3. Uh, but you can also make it run a bash script. So I wrote a really simple Perl script, which looks like this. It sets up the basic git. It takes the name of the branch and then normalizes it so that you can use that as a host name. And then it pushes this to the docker thing that I mentioned earlier, the pass. So that means that every time I have a new branch, a feature branch, which we typically use in our GitHub flow, uh, it will, as soon as those, that branch test, passes tests, it will set up uh, branch name dash, uh, input dash branch name and, uh, on our tests environment, and we can test that branch directly. Uh, and it will just push that to the docker and it will set it up. Uh, one gotcha that it's important to note here is that uh, since this is a, um, a shallow co copy of the thing, sometimes you, you will get some errors about it doesn't have enough information when it reaches uh, docu. And the way to solve that uh, is to set the git depth by increasing it so that it will have enough metadata. Because that tells you how much data it copied. So uh, if you want more information about this article, I wrote a blog post. Uh, a little while ago, and uh, you can go to marcus.nordoc.com and find the article covering this setup and the whole complete script and the YML file.